Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with complex numbers. We have 2 plus i divided by 1 minus 2i and that is raised to the power n and we get 1. This looks like a crazy equation, doesn't it? We can also write it differently, like distribute the powers and cross multiply. That gives us 2 plus i to the nth power equals 1 minus 2i to the nth power. How can the same power of two different complex numbers be the same? Isn't that really weird? Maybe, maybe not. So we can look at it from different angles. But does this imply if I take both sides to the power 1 over n, this should give me 2 plus i equals 1 minus 2i. Correct? Is it true? No way. That's not going to happen. Because these two complex numbers are definitely different, right? Real parts are different. Imaginary parts are different. There's no way they're equal. One thing we know, though, if we square two opposites, we get equal values. But 2 plus i and 1 minus 2i are not opposites either. So what are they? How are they related? Let's find out. Maybe we can use the polar form, can we? Let's go ahead and give it a try. So 2 plus i, if you think about the modulus of 2 plus i, it is root 5, right? The absolute value. And we're going to multiply it by e to the power i theta. Let's just pick theta here. What is theta? Theta is arc tangent of 1 over 2. Remember, tangent theta is b over a when you write a complex number as a plus bi. What is so significant about a plus bi? Well, it's the name of the channel and the general representation for a complex number. And you got to remember a and b are real numbers. If you're new to complex numbers, by the way, you can go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a series of videos on basics of complex numbers, starting with the very definition. Okay, so this is how we can write 2 plus i and theta is defined as such. What about 1 minus 2i? Uh-oh, it has the same modulus. That should not be a surprise. You know why? Because when you raise two complex numbers with different moduli to the same power, you cannot get the same answer. Does that make sense? Because you're going to have like a um, bigger number in comparison or something like that. Anyways, they have to have the same modulus. And that kind of makes sense because if you take the absolute value of the quotient, you get one because... It's 1. Okay. I guess that makes sense. I don't know. It did make sense to me. So 1 minus 2i, let's go ahead and define that argument or angle as alpha, just to use a different thing. And then alpha in this case is going to be, is that going to be arc tangent negative 2? Here's the thing. You got to be careful. 1 minus 2i, because cosine is positive, sine is negative, it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. But when you do the arc tangent, you're either going to be in the first or the second quadrant. So... To get into the fourth quadrant, you need to add pi to the angle. You see, you have to be careful about these conversions. Our tangent does not always give you the argument. There's even a chart that I believe I shared as a post. Maybe I didn't do it on this channel. Maybe I did it on my other channel. Oh, do you have another channel? Yes, I do have another channel. It's called CyberMath. Cyber with an S. And by the way, some people think I'm from Siberia. I'm not from Siberia. Cyber is for different things. Anyways, so that was a quick uh, shameless promotion or self-marketing. What is that called? Multi-level marketing, whatever. MLM, something like that. I didn't even know that term until one day somebody wrote in the comments like, oh, are you doing MLM? Okay, what is MLM? Is kind of looks like m and m or, Oh, I know m and m Okay, anyways, that's a different thing. So alpha and theta, alpha, I mean, and theta. So... They're relate are they related? I mean, when you raise them to the same power, you're going to multiply them by the same number. Can they be equal? Yeah. Okay, so this is something you can do. When you multiply them, you're going to get n theta and n alpha, and you probably want them to be equal to each other or differ by a multiple of 2 pi. And obviously, you don't want to use n there. n is already used, so maybe use a k there. Okay? Make sense? So hopefully, you're going to get something from your... Uh, what can I get from here, for example, when I multiply this by n, n arc tangent b one half equals n times arc tangent negative two 
plus pi. And then I could probably do this, like factor out an n and write it like this. Set it equal to pi. And then maybe find a numerical value for this because what you can do is you can call this beta and then tan both sides. Like if beta is equal to arc tan one half minus arc tan negative two. And then you can kind of tangent both sides. And when you tangent both sides, you're going to get the tangent or arc tangent one half, which should normally give you uh, one half. And then this should give you negative two. Just work it out, just like the. Uh, the difference uh, formula for tangent, the tangent of a difference. And then from there you'll get some idea about beta, which is hopefully going to give you something. But again, we need to figure out what n is in this case, and hopefully we can figure it out. Anyways, I just wanted to give you some uh, pointers, so hopefully you can take it from here. Um, I'm kind of being lazy here, I don't want to pursue this, but if someone can do this, and get it to all the way to the end and let us know how that goes. Because I need to show you a couple different things, okay? Ready? Now here's another thing. We said that, okay, we have two numbers that are raised to the same power, two different numbers, and that they give us the same result. Cool. I mean, they're not the opposites, so their squares are not going to be equal, but I still want to square them out of curiosity, right? Obviously, there's a good reason. But anyways, let's just pretend uh, it doesn't exist. And this will be 3 plus 4i. And if I square 1 minus 2i, by the way, have you noticed that these two numbers have the same modulus? And the real and imaginary parts are kind of switched in an interesting manner. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Just bear with me. Let me finish this process because this will shed light uh, onto the solution. So when you square this, you're going to get negative 3 minus 4i. Uh-oh. These numbers are not opposites, but their squares are opposites. What is that supposed to mean? It means that if you square them again, you're going to get the same thing, right? I mean, 3 plus 4i squared is the same as negative 3 minus 4i squared. Remember, a complex number has two squares, and they are opposites all the time, right? So this is what happens. And what is that supposed to mean? It means you square them, and then or they're already the squares. So 3 plus 4i, for example, is 2 plus i squared. And then you square that one more time, you're going to get fourth power. And then same thing here, uh-oh, 4 is a solution. But the million dollar question is, is n equals 4 the only solution? That's a million dollar question. Let's go ahead and answer it for free, okay? So here's my approach. Should I call this second method? The first method was kind of jumbo mumbo. I know some people are like, oh, he's trying to waste time, blah, blah, so on and so forth. No, not really. I just wanted to show you alternatives, okay? Fine. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide these numbers. Why didn't we do that first? Because no pain, no gain. That's what the first method is called, right? So let's go ahead and divide them. How do we divide them? There's a couple different ways, but let's go ahead and just use the conjugate, the general method. If you distribute the top, you're going to get 2 plus 4i plus i minus 2 from 2i squared divided by 1 plus 4, which is 5, you knew that. 2's cancel out, we get 5i over 5, uh-oh, this gives us i. Nice. That's beautiful because now I can replace this whole thing with i and my equation turns into this. Uh-oh, that's really nice, isn't it? Yes, what's that supposed to mean? That, does that mean n equals 4? No, not really. It just means n equals 4k, where k is an integer because we know that any multiple of 4 is going to produce 1 when i is raised to that power. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, there's alternatives, but let's not talk about it. You can probably figure them out. And here's the solution from Wolfram Alpha. Good job. Wolfram Alpha was able to solve this problem, which is sometimes rare. Sometimes it just fails, but that's okay. It's just AI. What can you do, right? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.